Hello, uh, Lee Wells here. I am uh, coming to you from the Wells Ranch studio. This is typically my podcast studio, but tonight it is for an update on the wildfire uh, efforts that we are working on. And some of you, most of you may know, this week has been a whirlwind of effort and phone calls and messages doing our best to get the supplies that we have in North Texas down and out to uh, to West Texas to the Panhandle. I want to talk to you a little bit about the status of the, the fires. First of all, it's not contained. They are getting close, but then I was just on the phone with a guy down there and he said tomorrow and the next day are back to high risk um, fire danger. So we're just praying they can get it out tonight and before this high winds and all that come in, it's uh, it's about 80 to 80 percent, 85 percent contained. It's always a guesstimate, but they are close to getting it out. But it's two weeks of burning. Uh, it's it's crazy to think. I'll talk about some of the statistics here in just a minute, but uh, I want to tell you about what we've done this week. And this week we launched one of the largest private initiatives that I know of, that I've come across in my communications with the people on the ground doing the work out there. There's a lot of good people doing a lot of good things. There's some groups doing some good things, um, some ag organizations that are doing some things, and, and everybody's doing all that they can. But I believe we may be one of the largest individual efforts going on right now. And we are working on moving hay from North Texas to West Texas. And so we have a network of drivers with trailers, both semi and gooseneck uh, trucks, uh, to be able to get these bales of hay out there to them. The other thing that we're working on is raising money, funds to put towards grain. And uh, if you saw, I was on the front page of the Dallas Morning News uh, yesterday, um, a story that they wrote. I was on uh, foxnews.com uh, this week as well. They did a breaking news story on it. Uh, the, the Rockwall Times and the Blue Ribbon News in Rockwall as well. And so you can find all of that on my website at leewellsofficial.com. All of those are linked off of that page. If you go to the page, there's a red uh, button that says uh, wildfire relief, and you can go there and, and read about those things. But let me just tell you, uh, I wanted to get on this camera tonight and tell you that things were going well out there, and things were great out there, and we're coming around, we're seeing a difference. And it, it really grieves my heart tonight to tell you that this, that you might just turn it off right now if, if, if you don't want to hear it, because um, while we are doing great things, and we are making a difference. Uh, we've raised over $40,000 this week, thanks to people just like you who have sent $5, $500, $100, $2,500. It's amazing. I uh, had a gentleman yesterday say he was dropping off a check for $10,000 tomorrow, Monday. Um, uh, amazing, amazing, amazing things happening. Uh, but it's, it's not enough yet. Um, a hundred percent of the money that comes in is going straight to feed and some fuel costs that we can't get around because these guys have run two, three, five trips, round trips. They've used all of their money. They're not working. And so we are having to supplement fuel uh, for their haul to be able to keep them on the roads. And sometimes a hotel cost or something like that, just whatever it takes to get these volunteer donation these drivers to move these things around the way that that we have to do that but i'm trying to put all the money that we bring in to the grain that we are buying and if you read the article or if you've seen any of my posts the northeast texas farmers co-op in <clears throat> in uh, sulfur springs has been so kind to produce a uh, all feed, a 14% all-purpose feed that can be fed to cows, horses, 
uh, sheep, goats, and bulk ship that. And so it's in a one ton super sack on a pallet. It can go on a flatbed truck. It can go on a box truck. Uh, go on a flatbed trailer of any of any kind, and we can get that out there to them at cost. And so we have this week moved right at 45 tons of feed from North Texas through your donations and sent that out to the ranchers. I just got off a call in the western part of that condition or the country out there. <clears throat> that status update said that all of that feed has already made it to ranches. None of it's on the lot. All of it's being fed out right now. I believe I am the most efficient. This is the most efficient. I hate saying I hate talking about myself. I, I just have to tell you what's going on. Um, it's not about me. But we have moved that many tons of feed and it's already fed. It's already being fed. I believe this is the most efficient, most effective use of money in this entire process. We can take your donation. We don't get any of it. I'm not taking any money. 100% volunteer. Misty's working with me. Uh, wonderful lady that's doing logistics. Completely volunteer. We're both working 14 to 16 hours a day. Don't want any money. All of your money comes in goes to the 501c3 account, and within four to seven days, it's sitting in a feeder, it's on a ranch, it's not in some warehouse being inventoried and held up. It's going straight out. So uh, this process is the most efficient, effective way that we can get things done. I'm gonna tell you something that's probably gonna ruffle some feathers, but the state of Texas, our great governor, went and visited last week and hasn't done a single thing to help the process. There's not a special session called. Um, all he did was lift TxDOT regulations on weights, on trailers and loads. Uh, as far as I know, and if I'm wrong, I wanna be wrong. I want our government to step up and do something. The federal government hasn't done anything at all, and the local governments haven't done anything at all other than facilitate the donations that we're sending and holding them in a lot and sending them on to ranchers and they're doing their best to facilitate what we're doing. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're doing nothing. Nothing. Our government, who we pay royally to, you're one minute late, it's taxes, it's, it's penalties and interest, haven't given a dime that I know of, and I know men on the ground, honest men working hard without any sleep. And my, I keep looking down, my phone keeps going off, I'm sorry. I, I gotta turn my phone off because I, it's distracting me every time it lights up. Um, I probably should reshoot this, but I don't think a second shot, a second take would be any better, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to get through this. I'm trying not to get upset. Because we have big stores, like, like uh, I don't even wanna say, I'm gonna say farm stores that you know, that you have in your communities that are taking donations. I went into a store the other day and I said, what are y'all doing to help? You got feed all over this place. You got stores all over the United States. You say you're for the rancher, you're for the farmer. What are you doing? Oh, we have a donation sign. It was an eight and a half by 11 piece of printed paper obscurely placed up on the desk that said on, in the front of the desk, not where you check out, saying wildfire relief, donations. I said, oh, that's, that's effective. That's going to work. It's not going to work. Nobody even knows it's there. I walked outside, walked back in from the parking lot. I didn't see any sign of any at, at all that I would notice that, to be able to help. The government's not helping. The big box stores aren't helping. The only supplies that I know of that are going out are locally owned businesses. I know of some feed stores that have sent. I know of some feed producers that are, that are helping. I, and really, it's the ranchers that are helping. Ranchers are sending their hay and it's sending it out and, and delivering it to these men to be able to feed their cattle. I'm, I'm gonna try not to be upset, but I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna try not to show that I'm upset. Um, let me give you some statistics. 
We launched last Friday night with a, with a message on Facebook. I, I was disturbed. I was, I was troubled. I put a Facebook post out. I, I was in the camera like this, and, and, I, and I was honest and open about what these guys were facing. And I'm going to just tell you, I was 100% right then, just like I'm 100% right right now. There's nothing being done except for what you and I are doing. And these are some six generation ranchers. Let me paint this picture real quick. Texas has more cattle than any state in the United States. We have more cattle than anybody. 80% of our cattle are in the panhandle. One of the largest fires on record are, is burning right now, still. And the current number, the current number, I've got a hundred notes here. The current number of acres burned is 1.547 million acres. 1.547 acres. Let me tell you. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, about the need, because I could rattle on statistics for you. Roberts County, nine hundred twenty-five square miles, four hundred thirty-six four hundred thirty-six thousand acres, ninety percent burned. Ninety-one ranchers affected, seventy-five hundred cows dead, additional twenty-five thousand cows in that one county, with no grass to eat. That county alone has 1,200 bottle calves that have no mother because of the deaths. This is calving season right now, the spring. It's calving season. Every cow that a man has has a calf inside trying to come out. And most of the calves right now being born or stillborn or brain dead because the cow didn't have any oxygen during the fires. Or not enough. They barely survived. So we're thankful that the numbers are what they are. It's only 7,500 uh, 7, cows. But the cows that remain that were in that fire, their calves are, burnt, uh, are dead when they're born because of the lack of oxygen. That means a cow is barely alive, barely making it. Lungs are burned, hooves are burned. And one of the craziest things to think about, and I hate to even say this because I don't know who's going to see this, and I really don't care who sees it. I would love for you to send this to Greg Abbott himself. Doesn't bother me a bit. If Greg rolled in here right now, I'd shake his hand. I'd thank him for a lot of the things that he's done. I'd say, what are you doing right now? What can we do tomorrow? For these men, it's lost everything. We don't have, this has been two weeks. We don't have two more weeks. These cows are dying. We, we don't have two months to figure out what the uh, USDA process is and what the approval process and the application process is. I understand that some of those checks and balances have to be there, but I also understand we need to move. We got to go. And so they're not, so you and I are. 1,200 bottle calves, no mother. That's just in that one county. There's six counties affected. Over 1.5 million acres. The calves that are being born that are somewhat normal, they can't nurse because their udders of their mothers are burned. I'm not making this up. This is the, I, I just got off the call from the men who have been on the ground for two weeks providing these services. These are, these are from the ranchers. These are men who have delivered hay and, and grain to these ranchers to talk to them face to face. This isn't second, third, fourth hand. This is straight from the men who've done the work. There's cows having calves. The calves can't nurse because they're so burned underneath. And so what they're doing is they're giving them shots to abort the calves because it's better to try to save the cow than to have that calf try to, by nature and by instinct, try to drink and cause the wounds to be become infected. So the calves that are somewhat normal aren't going to make it. <clears throat> One of the numbers I heard just now on this call was they're estimating, the counties are estimating, 
that the hay necessity, round bale, large round bale hay, is 20,000 bales per county per month. There's six counties. I, you can do the math on that. And there's, they're saying it's going to take a minimum of three months before any grass has come back substantially to be able to help raise these cattle up. Some men are having to move their entire operation to Kansas and other places. They're having to rent and lease land other places because there's, there's not enough resources coming into the area. Some people don't have anywhere to go. They don't have a place in Kansas. They don't have a friend in Oklahoma. They don't have anywhere to go. In one county, 91 ranches, remember, in just one county. There's six counties right now that's affected by this. Why, why isn't this major news every night? I'm not a talk show. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be. I'm, I'm not one of these conspiracy guys that's going to get in here and, and get all angry and, and spit like, I, like I'm acting right now. That's not who I am. I'll tell you what, I'll do just about anything right now to help these guys. We raised forty to forty-three thousand dollars We sent 55 tons. We're making a, a small dent. But we've got to do more. We have to. These ranches will feed, we had 500 cows. They'll feed, or 600 cows. They'll feed one of these one ton bags in one feeding in, in one day. There's a ranch right now, a man just told me about, feeding 30, let me, let me look at my notes. 35 bales, round bales a day, a day. That's how many bales his cattle are eating a day. 35 bales a day. Six counties affected. I, I, don't, I don't know that we can solve the problem ourselves. We got people doing what they can do. I'm I'm just asking people to do what they can. I I told some people today. I said we gave last week. I told my church. So we gave last week, when the need was where it was. But now the need has grown. The need's bigger. So those of you who have given, and again, this is not for me or this is not for my house. This isn't for my bank account. I don't get. I'm not getting any of it. But for us who have given, we need to give again. Because I promise you, those ranchers out there, they're giving every day. Let me, let me tell you this statistic. The one man I just talked to, his neighbor has 55 miles of fence that's burned out. Think about that. I, I know I'm telling a lot of people a lot of things you don't know, you've never heard about, you, you're, it's foreign to you. Can you imagine rebuilding 55 miles of fencing? That's all his cross fences. That's everything on his ranch is burned out. It's got to be repaired before they can ever put cattle back on there. The fire is, they say, is 89% contained. I really, really hope and I pray that they're able to get that fire out. But even when they get that fire out today... Tomorrow, they get it contained, then we still have to feed them for three months in order for them to even be able to survive that are out there. So my, my heartbeat is that we're able to really make a difference. I want to send them a minimum of 50 tons a week of feed out there. That's going to be between sixteen and twenty thousand, depending on the fuel surcharges and the, what we have to comp in the in the fuels. It'd be about sixteen and a half to thousand to twenty thousand dollars a week that I, I need to see about bringing in, and I don't think that that's going to come necessarily from individual donations. But there's a lot of companies 
There's a lot of folks that have good, thriving businesses. And I hope that we stop scrolling by. I hope that we stop ignoring. I hope we pull our head out of the sand and we realize that this is going to affect us. If you take all the calf crop of this year and and cut it out, that means that there's an entire segment of one of the largest groups of cattle in the United States that won't have a calf that within two years is able to be beef. You're, you're looking at, you're looking at prices on beef like you've never seen before. You're looking at grocery store prices because this affects everything. You're looking at grocery store prices like you, you think they're high now. We have to save every one of these animals that we can. If they start dying from infections, if they're not able to be treated because of the things that are going on, if they don't have good nutrition, they're not going to make it. And we have to do something because it's going to affect your grocery bill. It's going to affect your life. Um, I'm not getting into the origins of the fire. I'm not going to talk about it. I don't know. All I'm saying is our government is not lifting a finger. So you have to. I have to. Now I'm going to close you. I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this. I had someone ask me earlier today. They said, do you, do you think it was the Democrats or do you think it was the Republicans that had something to do with starting this fire? I said, man, i tell you what I've seen this week. I haven't talked to a Democrat. I haven't talked to a Republican. I haven't talked to a black man. I haven't talked to a white man. I haven't talked to a rich man and I haven't talked to a poor man. I've talked to Americans. I've talked to Texans. I've talked to neighbors. Not not a single person this week have I talked to, have identified as Republican or Democrat. Not a single person I've talked to, and I've talked to hundreds and hundreds of people. One morning, just just on, I think it was Wednesday morning, I stopped and counted at two hours. At 10 o'clock, I was on the phone from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock, 200 calls, texts, or or messages. Talked to hundreds of people this week, maybe thousands. Not a single one of them identified as some identifier that the news, the media, the government, the whoever wants us to identify with each other. We're we're not that. We're Americans. We we don't have a lot of great big differences, but we got a whole lot of stuff in common. All of us want the same thing. We want to have a family. We want to have a good life. We want to have peace. We want to have the ability to move freely. What we're doing is very simple. It's human stuff. We want enough food on our table. We want to be able to trust that our neighbor is, is, has got our back. That's what, we, that's what we are. That's who we need to get back to. And it's going to take people like you and me that step up and say, you know what? I don't have a lot, but I'm going to give. Do you know I don't have a lot of time to give this? I'm a very busy person. But do you know what I've done? I've given it anyway. I've had I had some some gifts come through this week to the to the donation that were five dollars. I made a post about it. Five dollars. And to me, those were some of the most important gifts that I saw because it was somebody that said, Yeah, I'll help. I don't have a whole lot, but I am gonna do something. And I wish that we would do that. Stop waiting on another ten thousand dollar donation. Stop. You get involved. You put $10 in there. You do it. And I'll put that 100% in a feed sack. And within four to seven days, they'll be eating it. And if they could thank you, they would. The, The ranchers are absolutely thanking you. I have ranted like I have never believed that I could. I'm going to watch this back. I may not even share it. And then again, I might. I don't know. I hope that you're blessed. I really do. I hope you're making it. But I also hope that you realize the severity of the situation. I just touched the very top of the, of the notes and the situation that we're in. 
You can imagine how deep it goes. You can imagine how bad it is. And you can imagine how much distress is in that area. And I'm going to focus on the good. I'm going to focus on the benefits. I'm going to focus on the help. And I want you to help me do the same. If you could share this to somebody that's got a big company, tell them, let's go. Let's go. You've got the money. Write the check. Send it to somebody that, 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 loves, that loves to help and let them send $5. Whatever they can do, it's going to make a difference. Within the last seven days, we've raised $43,000. And it's all going 100% out. I got to tell you this. I'm going to get done. We have t-shirts coming out. All the proceeds go towards grain and feed. We have a benefit concert coming out. We're getting the details ironed out tomorrow. Uh, we got legal stuff to work out. But I have a guest coming who, if everything works out, is a contestant, real-time contestant right now on The Voice. And the the, the person, I can't say guy or girl, the person can sing. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've teamed up with Sideways Barbecue in the, in the harbor, in their stage, and we're going to get some tickets out, and we want you to be a part of it. We want you to be in this. Our, our plan is to sell you a ticket. All of that proceeds goes to feed. We're going to give you a T-shirt, and we'll give you a concert. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a watch party slash concert. It's going to be a lot of fun. I appreciate everything everyone's done. If you have given a dollar, five dollars, ten thousand dollars, thank you. I promise you, we're gonna we're gonna make a dent. We're going to help every single person we can out there. And I appreciate what you've done. Have a great afternoon, great evening. God bless you.